the second week of December, my second December festive leaning what I wore last week. So I've got a really random couple of perfumes this week because I have some Avon perfumes and generally speaking I don't like Avon perfumes. I feel like they all have a specific DNA um, that I just can't get on with, at least all the modern ones do. And I, I just, I was watching Soaky London, she did, she's done a couple of Avon uh, reviews recently. She did the Eve collection and those are ones I've smelt on a few occasions. I've never liked any of those. I've had loads of samples of the Eve ones because they've been compared to quite a lot of the kind of lighter, greener, you know, fresh fruity, you know, all those kind of perfumes I generally like. But she did um, the some of the Far Away collection. And I had completely forgotten about Far Away, but I had the original Far Away when it came out, which I think was like maybe 93 or 94, five, something like that. So I would have been very young. Um, I would have been, I don't know, like in the 90s, like 10, 11, 12-ish, you know, depending on which year it came out. But I, you know, a lot of us young girls, we wore Coty and we wore the Body Shop. And if our mums had a friend who did Avon or did Avon, we had an Avon perfume and I really liked Far Away I loved the bottle I liked the smell but I couldn't really remember much about what it smelled like and Soki said um it reminded her of uh Giorgio Beverly Hills now that is a perfume that I really I can't wear it's too strong and it had like a pea smell on me but the actual general the very deep dry down which I mean I can't wait for hours until that smell turns up because it, I don't like it the, how it smells beforehand but the, the deep dry down of that I think is amazing so I was like okay I'm gonna try this one just for memory so I ordered a little um 10 mil this is these are the purse sprays and at the same time i ordered the other one that i've been looking at for ages just because i thought the notes looked quite interesting which is far away rebel so um i'll talk about this one in a bit because i did wear this this week as well but far away the original i mean this was so exciting i mean i don't mean to sound insane because this is like an eight pound perfume but as you can see I got through a fair bit of this one. Um, I tested it on a bit of card and I was like, oh my God, I totally do remember this smell. This is really interesting. Um, and you know, when I was young, I didn't pay any attention to the notes. So I didn't know there was coconut in it. I didn't realize it was kind of a creamy vanilla. I didn't realize it, you know, what flowers were in it. And even now I'd say, I don't know that I'd necessarily be like, maybe like a young ylang ylang, but I don't think I'd have been like, oh, I can tell you exactly what flowers are in this or what I smell like. It's just, oh my God, it's so cozy. I will say, um, I don't agree with Soki in that I don't think this smells like Giorgio Beverly Hills. Like I would not make that comparison. I went to have a look at Fragrantica and there's no, there's no other comparison to that perfume. So I don't personally think that Far Away smells like Giorgio. But what I do think is that it does have the same kind of happy vibe about it there's something sunshiny about it so basically on Saturday because I got this last week um and I think I was testing it out maybe Friday night um no when did I get it I can't really remember all I know is that I wore the hell out of this on Saturday because when I first tested it or I first smelt it my husband liked it as well um and I was I just said to him I said oh I'm gonna wear this on Saturday I wore it on Saturday, I loved it, I kept respraying it, and as you can see, um, I got through a lot of it. Um, it's not the worst at lasting, but I just think I loved it so much that I wanted to keep going back. So, I obviously went straight onto Avon and ordered a big bottle. So I can actually talk to you about this while I show you the big bottle. Because also, I think the far away original bottle is so cute. Um, I think it's really pretty. It's not got the most expensive kind of look about it, obviously, but it's just so cool. It's so pretty. Um, so the original Far Away, let me tell you, I'm going to be talking about this one for a while. So if you're not interested, just skip over. The notes in this are top notes of coconut, ylang ylang, peach, Caro Corunde, I don't know what that is. It's like a little white flower, um, look, probably like an oriental flower, I'd imagine. Um, orange, middle notes, jasmine, gardenia, violet, freesia, osmanthus and rose. Base notes, vanilla, sandalwood, amber and musk. And this is 
a properly warm floral. It's really cozy, it's powdery, it's sweet. It has a slight coconutty hint. It also has a slight plastic doll head smell about it. Now, I, I, I the thing is, a lot of perfumes from the 80s and 90s, I, they smell synthetic there is this kind of plasticky vibe about a lot of them if you're thinking like you know eden and lulu and like um all kinds of perfumes that it was just kind of the way that perfume smelt there was like a slight weird synthetic vibe going on that has a slight plasticky note but again it's like that doll head smell which i find quite comforting and i really like it um and this one what i would say is that this is kind of what I wanted Dolce Garden to smell like in terms of like it's a warm floral with a bit of coconut you know it's very vanilla-y but it's it's the kind of vanilla that I really like it's not like a it's not like a kind of vanilla fields vanilla which makes me feel sick it's like a custardy vanilla you know and it's so cozy I wore this twice this week I wore this for a full day twice that's how much i liked this perfume now obviously there is probably something to do with the fact that i had this when i was young so i probably find it comforting because of that as well but i genuinely think and soki said as well like for for such a cheap perfume this is actually incredibly good value and it's a nice one um so i'm just gonna check what i said on for granted because i did write a big old um uh review uh, it's sweet, cozy, it's a bit creamy, it's powdery. Um, oh yes, I said it that it gives me the same vibe as the Sarah Jessica Parker's Lovely Lights that I got a while back because that's also like a, a creamy sweet floral. It's a different smell completely but in terms of like how it makes me feel to wear it, this is like an even kind of sweeter vibe of that one. Um, which I really, really enjoy. And um, I mean, it lasted on my clothes for a really long time. It lasts on me uh, very obviously for a couple of hours. Turns into a skin scent. Maybe after about four or five hours, I definitely want to completely respray this one. But weirdly, I could still smell it on me the next morning, but like only if I put my, you know, hand right up to my nose. But I had worn quite a lot of it by that point. So overspray the hell out of this one for sure. And it doesn't really have the DNA um, of modern uh, Avon perfumes. Like if I smelt someone wearing this, I wouldn't know that they were wearing an Avon perfume. Whereas some of the other ones I've tried, um, Caram Apple and some of the other ones, um, they have like an underlying Avon smell in the same way that I think a lot of body shop perfumes have the same underlying body shop smell. Um, this one doesn't have that. This one smells really original to me. Um, and I guess it, you know, it's one of their really, I mean, they've been making it for so long. I mean, I'm 41 soon. So, and I had this when I was maybe 11 or 12. Um, so they've been making this for a long time. It's been successful for a long time. So it's pretty it's pretty great I, I just I'm really excited about it I really like it and I would say in terms of the flowers again it's just a bit flowery it's a bit sweet there's quite a lot of sandalwood um it's really warm from the amber people say there's a lot of peach but I, I think if there is it's very sort of honeyed and syrupy and it's not um it's not like tangy because I'm really fussy I don't like peach in most perfumes so um there's definitely a hint of coconut i just i just really enjoy it i think it's great so anyway uh, my husband loves it he loves this perfume he really really is into it um and when i wore it again later in the week i went i kissed him goodbye on my way to work and he just literally he didn't know what i was wearing he just said you smell delicious so you know possibly a man killer or maybe just my man killer who knows um so that was saturday and then on sunday i was just in the mood for this guy again little chocolate musk um, from Al New Aim. And <clears throat> what I didn't really think about with this one, and I hadn't really realized before, is that it's got quite a lot of projection. <laughs> it lasts for ages. I knew it lasted for ages because I can put it on like in the morning. I can smell, still smell it in the evening. Um, and you know, some oils are like that. Obviously some just last for ages, but I walked out of my bedroom and my stepson was here at the weekend and he, he came out of his room and he was like, what's that smell? And I was like, oh, what kind of smell is it? And he said, it smells sweet. And I just sort of bent down. And I was like, is it me? 
<laughs> he said, he said, yeah, that's yummy. So I think it's because it smelled like sweets. I think he thought maybe I was making a pudding. So, I mean, and he was on the other side of the flat. So this is, this fills a room, this smell. And also my husband has often walked into the room when I'm wearing this and, and just instantly goes, hmm, what's that? Hmm, yum. Um, <laughs> so yeah, chocolate mask by Elmi Aim is an absolute classic. Um, so the notes in this are cocoa, chocolate, caramel musk, orange flower, vanilla, and ylang ylang. And it, it honestly, it just smells like, it doesn't smell expensive. It doesn't smell massively natural, but it, it smells like a kind of very tasty, cheap, caramel covered in chocolate or like a kind of toffee covered in chocolate it's just delicious so I wore that and then um I've got this guy um so this is something I got from Amazon so this is coffee and this is by Sergio Nero and they do actually have this one on Fragrantica so the notes that are listed on Fragrantica for this are violet, bergamot, mandarin, orange, middle notes of brown sugar, sandalwood, patchouli and jasmine, base notes, coffee, sesame and saffron. And I um, I didn't realise this was on because when I got it on Amazon, it didn't really say anything about about who it was by or like I didn't really to be honest it was 15 quid I just saw it was coffee I read some of the Amazon reviews and people were saying it actually smells so much like a cup of black coffee that I can't wear it and I was like okay that sounds quite interesting so coffee um it does it smells like a cup of uh, coffee it absolutely smells like a cup of coffee and I was really I was just really surprised I was like okay I think I like it I don't know the only thing is like when do you wear something that smells like an actual cup of coffee it literally smells like a cup of black coffee but it smells like a cup of black coffee while you're eating like um, a sesame snap if that makes sense <laughs> um, because that sesame does come through it definitely comes through I don't think hardly anything else in those notes come through really um, it's not overly sweet but it's slightly sweetened it's like a it's like an espresso well is it even espresso I'm not sure it's really strong enough it lasted for ages I actually tried I tried it um on its own and I tried it over the top of this and these two didn't actually mix very well which I was quite surprised about but on its own it's full coffee with a, a like maybe half a teaspoon of sugar and some uh yeah like I said like some sesame uh so I would say if you if you like the idea of a straight up black coffee and you don't want to spend like I think it's they're called acro if you don't want to spend those kind of prices then this is actually very bargainous it's 15 pounds you can get it from um you can probably get it on eBay as well but I got it on Amazon like I said um I didn't realize you could get a smaller one this is I think 50 mil this is a 50 mil mm. Yes, this is a 50 mil, but I think you can get like a 30 mil in a slightly different shape bottle for like 11 pounds. So it's not a huge investment if you want to kind of test it out, you know. Um, so, yeah, so I was just like, OK, that's a that's a pretty good one, to be honest. It's kind of tasty. So <laughs> that was my um, Saturday and Sunday and then Monday to work. Um, I was just, I was in the mood for my beloved stash by Sarah Jessica Parker. Now, what I hadn't realised before, and I'm, I can't believe I hadn't realised it, <laughs> is that there is something about the resins and the woods and the spices in this that makes it smell a bit like a Christmas tree. Now, obviously, I'd not really been thinking about Christmas trees and stuff when I first got this and when I've been wearing it other times, but because I'd been where um, I'd just got that um, body shop uh, wild pine perfume and I'd said I was a bit disappointed because it didn't I didn't really I mean it does have a pininess but it's not like it's not like warm pine it's not like an indoor tree pine you know and this one I was like oh my god it totally does smell a bit like a Christmas tree I can't believe I hadn't realized it before so <laughs> I really loved wearing it even more because it made me feel so festive so the notes in this top notes black pepper and sage obviously sage is such a 
a Christmassy scent anyway, just because it's always, I always put it in like stuffing and, you know, with the bird and oh, it's just, I love sage. Um, grapefruit, middle notes, atlas cedar, patchouli, pistachio, white ginger lily. So you've got that gingery vibe as well. Masoya wood, olibanum, vetiver and musk. And honestly, there's just something about this now that I'm just forever going to be like, oh, there's just something about it that's slightly piney. Like, yeah, oh my God. It's like, it really is like sitting next to a real tree, um, a real Christmas tree, a real beautiful fir, um, sipping a lovely warm gingery drink next to like a burning fire you know you've got that slight smokiness you've got that beautiful rich wood you've got the lovely kind of herbalness and the warm you've got the the warmth of the black pepper but I think there's something about the way that the woods and the patchouli and the olibanum that all mix together just make it smell slightly piney um and again I always say not everyone gets the pistachio but I get the pistachio in this so I always love this one and I just oh my god it was so fun to wear it but yeah it totally gave me Christmas tree vibes um which is so cool <laughs> now what was next on the list okay so I've got next oh I think maybe on Tuesday I wore this one again so I've already talked about this one don't need to talk about it again so what I'll do instead is I'll talk about the next day. So on Wednesday, I decided to try the Rebel one because um, I really liked this. And again, I've got a, I haven't got quite the same dent, but I've got a bit of a dent in this one. Um, and I wore this one out and liked it enough again to get a bottle. Now I will say that on Avon at the moment, you can get the 50 mils, you can get two for 16 pounds. So they're ridiculously cheap. Um, they've got something on the website about this being like compared to, what's it called? Black opium, but it doesn't smell, I don't know, it doesn't smell anything like black opium to me, not really. Um, so this is the bottle for Far Away Rebel. As you can see, it's a different shape. It's not round. Well, I mean, this one's not really round, as you can see but they've gone for a different vibe with this. Most of the faraway bottles are like this, but the Reb, there's two Rebel ones. And this one is a lovely purpley color. So I'll read you the notes and I'll tell you how I feel about it because I actually really enjoyed wearing this. It was very fun. So the top notes here are, well, on for granted it says whipped cream and black currant, red fruits and dried plum. Um, I happen to know that on Avon that is listed as creme de cassis, not whipped cream and blackcurrant. But I mean, you know, the effect is probably relatively similar. Middle notes, orange blossom, Madagascar, vanilla, jasmine, sandback. Base notes, chocolate, caramel, salt, patchouli and amber tonic. Now you might notice that that lists patchouli, amber tonic and salt and jasmine, all of which I really don't like. And Madagascar vanilla, which I can be very fussy about vanilla. But I'm just going to say it outright. I don't get patchouli. I don't notice any of that amber tonic stuff. It doesn't go funny on my skin. Um, I don't really recognise that there's many florals in this. If anything, there's a bit of orange blossom. I don't get any jasmine. Um, and chocolate, maybe a tiny bit. I get more caramel. Um, what I get from this is a creamy purple berry smell i mean I, I, even to say it's black currant i guess it's black currant yes but there's something about the plum and the red fruits in this that kind of makes it something else oh i'm sniffing this but i haven't actually sprayed this one yet what am i doing i'll sniff the other one um <laughs> so if i sniff this little guy yeah it's you can kind of tell it's black currant tea but i think there's something plummy about this as well creamy there's a little bit of sweetness from that caramel and it is a slightly salty caramel but it's not massively um salty um and there's maybe a tiny hint of bitterness but like when you first spray it i can i can get a little bit more of a vibe for why people say that this one has a black opium kind of smell but it isn't really anything like black opium what i think this smells like genuinely and what it or at least the experience i felt when i was wearing it was much more like my 
my only wish from Larive, which is the dupe I have of Cacherelle's Yes I Am. So I think this is a much closer kind of match to the general profile of Cacherelle's Yes I Am, but without all those kind of spices that some people find a bit like disturbing in that perfume so obviously that one's got like cardamom it's got a number of it's got so many so many notes and what I said I said on Fragrantico about this one is that this one I think is what I expected yes I am fabulous to smell like and that's the one that's supposed to be like a blackberry milkshake or something you know so like I was expecting that one to be creamy um, and similar to Yes I Am Original, but less spicy and more purple berries. And that's what this is. So I love this one. I think it's great. It just is like having the purple berry, berry version of Yes I Am, but without that kind of slightly odd plasticky smell that you get from um, the cardamom in that. I really, really like it. I think it's very tasty. Um, on the... Avon website they note they only note three things so they say creme de cassis top note middle note orange blossom and base notes toffee so I also think that the fact that this is toffee and not caramel is making this more palatable to me because sometimes caramel perfumes can be a bit much but my goodness I do love a kind of toffee smell so yeah I just, I just really this is fun this one's just super fun again it's not massively long lasting but I'll tell you what I did a I did a test on card of the this next to my Larive um my only wish and this one lasts longer definitely and is stronger than my only wish so it's perfect for winter because that's the other thing I've been wearing stuff that is kind of strong enough and it's really sweet so it's good for winter you know I really like this one I think this is really good I think this far away and far away rebel I'm really really into I'm really glad I got them and you know unexpected little bits of joy really so let's try to make some space in here. I don't want to move my noisy tree. There we go, that'll do. Um, so next on the list we have, oh, this one was fun. So it's that time of year to break out the super sweet thing. So literally sweet by Lolita Lempica. Very, very delicious. Let's try and make some space here. So you can actually see her glorious red colour. So um, I've got uh, I've got the bottle that I mean I'm, it's such a shame they changed the bottles. These new bottles are nowhere near as cool as the old bottles, and also they literally are constantly falling over. It's really annoying trying to get trying to get my other perfumes out or get this perfume out um, because it's such a small base. I'm always knocking my Lolita sweets over, like it's really annoying. But <laughs> in terms of wearing a perfume, absolutely delicious. So th this is obviously the reformulated version. I'm very sure that this isn't as strong um, as the old one. Uh, I, I think it's still got the same notes, but I imagine it's been reformulated when they put it in these new bottles. So I can't comment on what it used to smell like, but the notes here, top notes of sour cherry and sugar, middle notes of cacao, iris and angelica, base notes of musk and cashmere wood. And when you first spray this, it has like actually quite a natural smelling, strong, sweet and sour cherry smell. It does actually properly smell like a juicy cherry and it very, very quickly turns into then like a cherry syrupy smell, you know. Um, it's absolutely yummy, to be honest. And the longer it dries down, the more you start getting that chocolate coming through. You get a bit of the cacao. But I think in the like deeper dry down, even though it's iris, there's something about the mixture of the sour cherry and iris with that angelica that I think this smells a bit violety when it dries down. I think it smells, I, I really was expecting to go into the notes and see violet and I always think I think that and then it's iris. It's so nice, it's so nice and it gets nicer as it dries down I think this one. So I loved wearing it but um, yeah this is just totally delicious. I really enjoyed wearing it. It's a really, it's just such a fun one. That's the thing. It's just such a fun, fun perfume to wear. And I think in terms of cherries, it's a really good affordable cherry because 
I've been smelling quite a lot of cherry perfumes and I generally, I, I so often don't like the other things in the perfumes and I find them really disappointing and I'm just like, oh, I don't really want to wear that, I don't really like the smell. So I have to say, I think that Sweet is an absolute bargain. You can normally get it for under £30 for a little 30ml and it smells absolutely delicious, Sweet. I think it's a, a great perfume if you like cherry. Um, and I think some people say it's too sweet, but I, I don't find it like any any more sweet than a lot of the other sweet perfumes that I wear or I have smelt um, because it has that sourness in it as well. But I think it depends. If you don't like sherbetty um, perfumes, then I can imagine that this just wouldn't be up your street. So Friday, oh, I was not in a good mood on Friday. I felt cold and a bit miserable and a bit tired and I just woke up and I thought <laughs> I need something cheerful and I was like what have I got the sunshine in a bottle that isn't cabotine de Grez because I wore that last week on Friday so I thought I know I've got other things and I was like of course I have I've got poem by a Lancome so poem by Lancome just move this over here for now so you can see this absolutely glorious elixir. Look at this colour. Oh my goodness. I love this one so much. Um, so Poem by Lancome is, it's just such a masterpiece. I don't know what else to say about this perfume. It is absolutely scrumptious and beautiful and glorious. And it is a warm, vanillary, honeyed, yellow floral. I mean, that's kind of, that's the general overview of it. I think there's quite a lot of tuberose in this, which is probably one of the reasons I'm really into it. This is from the early 90s, so it's an absolute beast. It is a beast. And although I think the general vibe of it, I think, is like a glorious kind of beautiful woman in the springtime kind of vibe. But because it's so strong, I think it's really shines in cold weather because it can really hold up to very cold weather and yesterday was the coldest day in such I can't remember the last time we had December this cold it was literally zero degrees when I got up in the morning actually no it was minus two when I woke up in the morning and then by the time I was on my way to work it was like zero degrees and the warmest it got was like three degrees I think all day um, and I live in London so in other parts of the UK it must have been crazy crazy cold so this is a perfume that everyone around you will definitely be able to smell. This is not one to wear if you're going anywhere like with loads of confined spaces. Um, but it, but like I said, because it's so cold, like I wasn't worried about wearing this to work or on the tube. And you just have to, you know, you don't need to go ham with this one. You need like one spray between your wrists, a um, couple on your neck and that's it. You really don't need to go any further with Poem, it's strong. Now, this is one that everyone said, well, not everyone said, I thought was discontinued because Lancome UK said it was discontinued last year. Um, but you still seem to be able to get it and it does, I, apparently you can, um, the new version isn't as dark. So I think maybe they just took this away and it, people couldn't get it and all the sites and all the shops were saying it was discontinued and everyone was saying it was discontinued just because it had kind of disappeared while they were reformulating it. I think that maybe might be what happened. I can't comment. Uh, all I know is that someone on Fragrantica said they've got a bottle that's the batch code is 2022 and the colour's a bit lighter and it's not as strong. But so long as it still has the same smell, that's fine because Poem is not an expensive perfume. You can get a 30ml of this in the UK right now for about £30. And it is, I mean, it's such good value because it is a really... a beast in terms of strength um so the notes there's so many top notes narcissus datura peach plum himalayan poppy mandarin orange blackcurrant bergamot green notes middle notes mimosa vanilla flower tuberose ylang ylang orange blossom jasmine freesia heliotrope rose and leather base notes vanilla orange blossom amber tonka bean musk and cedar so many notes would i recognize half of those notes nope it's it's beautiful it's just really nicely blended um if i look at the votes mimosa is up the top followed by narcissus and that kind of makes sense because this is like quite a specific smell this one um 
and it definitely has some notes that I don't necessarily recognize from other places like and Datura is quite high but tuberose is really high and I can definitely smell tuberose Ylang Ylang's high I can definitely smell that the peach is quite high but again this isn't really tangy this is like creamy this is my happy yellow floral that I think sits on a bed of vanilla custard because it's that kind of vanilla -y smell you get from this you don't get again you don't get like a vanilla field you don't get like a vanilla essence I think it's got a custardy kind of vanilla in it which is creamy and warm and it's another warm floral and I know um, Sarah Mays has been loving warm florals recently because she did a video about them but I think at this time of year it's just such a it's such a joyful smell to have like a warm bright sunny floral and um, it really put me in a good mood it's funny how it can it can really lift your spirits if you put the right perfume on you know I just kept sniffing myself I can probably still smell it on all of my clothes because it's a bit of a beast um, so the other thing um, I was going to say is that I think Prada La Femme reminds me of this but I'm not really sure if there's any of the same notes and it's funny that there's no honey in this because I really do think that this smells like it's got honey in it um it's kind of magical but yeah I don't think I'll be able to let me see let's have a look at Prada La Femme the original one that is with the white back um it kind of to me smells like the middle notes of Poem um without the kind of custardiness uh let's have a little look to see if it shares any of the same notes because I was recommended that as an alternative, but to be honest, oh yeah, there we go, yeah, ylang ylang and tuberose um, and vanilla, and I generally think that those are some of the strongest notes in Poem. This is just sunshine in a bottle, it really is. Oh, it's so joyous, but yeah, if you don't like florals, maybe stay away from it, but then saying that, I can be quite fussy about florals, so it's just... Oh, there's just so many good things, so many good things. So anyway, that's all the stuff that I properly wore. And then, um, like I said, when I was wearing this one, we went to Covent Garden, my husband and I, for a lovely meal and for a bit of a wander in all the Christmassy joy. And what we did, well, I mean, let's be real, he humoured me and he was, I was like, there's a Tom Ford over there. <laughs> and he was like, okay, I don't mind, you want to go and smell some perfumes? I was like, yeah. So they've got a Tom Ford uh, beauty shop, which has all the perfumes in there. And it's, you know, it's very fancy. Everyone in there is very fancy. Um, I got a lovely talk from a, from one of the chaps who works there about the way that notes are and that there's some notes that aren't real notes, you know. Um, so I smelt three perfumes. The first one was Solil Blanc. So the notes in Sol Blanc are pistachio, bergamot, cardamom, pink pepper, middle notes, tuberose, ylang ylang and jasmine, base notes, coconut, amber, tonka bean and benzoin. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, it's fresh, it's clean, it's pretty. I feel like I've probably smelled so many perfumes that want to smell like Sol Blanc that I didn't think it smelled particularly interesting, which is obviously a problem of when you have like the designer perfumes that everyone else is making kind of you know their versions of that then if you don't come to the designer one till later it doesn't really smell very special so I was like it's all right it's I'm not mad for it um I also smelt the real um black orchid now that is one that I have a dupe of from revolution and the revolution one is called passion um and honestly passion is an excellent dupe of black orchid because it smells so much like it and I have to say um it might have been different if I tried it on my skin because I was wearing far away rebel I wasn't really going to mix those two I didn't get a massive sense of truffle like it it wasn't something that really came through and maybe if I tried it on my skin or maybe I just like the smell of truffle which I do in sort of in food and stuff so maybe it just wouldn't bother me because I know some people are really bothered by the truffle but it just you know it just smells rich and mature um, I, I gave it to my husband to smell and he was like, mm, mm. I was like, is that too vintage for you? And he was like, yeah, I don't really like that one. Uh, <laughs> he was not impressed with it. I, I, when I gave him Solel Blanc, he was like, um, well, I mean, it's better than the other one. <laughs> that was his comment on it. So, you know, not particularly bothered. But then, then obviously I had to smell Lost Cherry because everyone talks about Lost Cherry and... <sighs> I can understand why they talk about lost cherry because lost cherry is proper black cherry and I, I I got kind of a leathery vibe from it for a little while 
Um, but that first burst is like a beautiful black cherry and a little bit of almond. You get that kind of richness from the liquor. Um, and then it dried down and started to be a bit like leathery, which I assume is like all the mixture of the base notes because the base notes have got like clove and cedar and patchouli and vetiver. I have vetiver can be slightly smoky, so maybe that's what it was. Um, but then on the card, it just, it never really lost that delicious cherry. And then even even when I got home and I, I smelt it, although to be honest, by that point, it was very faint. And I know people say that it doesn't last and really it doesn't because my phone smelt like black orchid from where I'd had the tester card in my pocket. Literally my phone smelt like black orchid for like two days. <laughs> That's on plastic. Um, whereas the, the cherry one, I could smell it on my face mask because I had my silk face mask in my pocket where I had that one, but it was very weak. And it's a tragedy because my God, that is a beautiful perfume. I totally can see why everyone goes mad for it. I think it's way nicer than Burning Cherry um, from K. Arley because that one, that one starts off with black cherry, but the black cherry for me doesn't really last in that. So oh, I was like, oh, God damn it. And I've actually ordered a black cherry perfume oil from Etsy. So I'm going to see whether I can get my black cherry vibe from that because that's what I really like about it. I'm just, all the other notes are very nice, but my my joy of smelling that and my joy of the opening notes of um, um, both Cherry Smoothie from Zara and uh the ch the burning love fest burning cherry is the black cherry and it's really difficult to get a black cherry perfume because sour cherry doesn't smell like black cherry and red cherries don't smell like black but like black cherries like black cherry's got a really specific smell and those three perfumes have it in the opening notes but lost cherry is the only one that retains it to my nose so Anyway, I will continue to try and find a, not a black, not a lost cherry dupe, because I'm not worried about having a lost cherry dupe. What I want is that black cherry note. I just want that black cherry note, and I will come back to you guys if I manage to find it. So anyway, that's what I wore this week. And um, what, I, what I've done as well is I've ordered lots of the far away samples or the little purse sprays. It's cheaper to get the purse sprays from eBay because you can get them for around three quid and they're six pounds on the Avon thing. But um, Avon also have these tiny little samples. So I've got some of those. So I'm going to um, look at the whole range because I've got two from there that I actually like. I'm sure it might be possible those are the only two I do like, but you know, we'll see. Anyway, oh my goodness, it's getting so close to Christmas. I'm so overexcited. And um, I should say thank you to my husband for lending me his little um, Christmas tree for this because the one I've got in in uh, in my room is, is just too big. <laughs> it was taking up too much space. So I thought I'd do this one. Um, I'm going to see now whether you can hear it making all its noise, but I thought it was pretty. So, you know, I'm just joyous. <laughs> 